Hi, second graders. I want to show you a book today called Stikeen. As you can tell from the cover, it's a pretty exciting book. I try to hold it so you can see it and still hear me. So this is the tricky part for me. This story is true. The great explorer and environmentalist John Muir first met the little dog Stikeen while exploring in Alaska. This is the story of their most memorable adventure. In the summer of 1880, I set out from Fort Wrangell in a canoe. I planned to explore mountains of ice called glaciers in southeastern Alaska. My companions on board included four men and a little black dog. The dog was named Stikine after the Stikine Indians. He was a short-legged, shaggy pup with a bushy tail like a squirrel's. His dark eyes were sharp and clear. I did not want to take Stikine. Before we left, I told his master, such a little pup will only be in the way. Best to leave him behind. But his master said, he'll be no trouble at all. He's a perfect wonder of a dog. He can handle cold like a polar bear and can swim like a seal. Similes. As his master spoke, Stikine looked up at me as if to say, I am going with you. I will not be left behind. Our large and sturdy canoe floated down rivers and over waves, past islands and tall cliffs. From this start, Stikine was a curious character, puzzling and independent. As we rode, Stikine spent the days in lazy ease, often seeming to be in a deep sleep. Somehow, though, he always knew what was going on. If a duck or seal attracted our attention, for example, he would rest his chin on the edge of the canoe and calmly look out like a dreamy-eyed tourist. When we talked about making a landing, Stikeen would immediately jump up to see what sort of place we were approaching. Before we even reached the beach, he leaped overboard and swam ashore. Stikeen was always the first one out of the canoe. Stikeen was also always the last to get in. He could never be found when we were ready to continue our journey. He refused to come when we called, yet he was watching us from some secret hiding place. For as soon as our canoe set out, he would come trotting down the beach, plunge into the water, and swim after us. He knew we would stop rowing and take him in. I did not understand Stikeen. He was as cold as a glacier, simile. He rarely wagged his tail. He never asked for a hug or a pat on the head. When it was time to play or cuddle by the campfire, he would go off by himself, aloof in distance. I don't have time to play or sit by the fire, he seemed to say. Yet if there were rivers to swim, mountains to climb, or icy snow to cross, he could act as strong and fierce as a mountain man. One of our party, once our party crossed ice so rough and sharp, Stikine's feet began to bleed. His every step was marked by blood, yet he trotted on without a whimper or a cry. In spite of myself, I took pity on him, though I knew he would not thank me. I made him four tiny moccasins out of my handkerchief. For some reason, Stikine liked to follow me on my explorations. Whenever I left the camp alone, he was by my side. Yet he came as if to watch me with mysterious eyes rather than to share the journey as my friend. Early one morning, a storm began to blow. Everyone else in camp was sleeping, but I hurried to explore the music and motion of the storm. Taking my ice axe, buttoning my coat, and putting a notebook and a piece of bread in my pocket, I set out. I had not gone far when I saw Stikine running through the snowy storm to join me. No, Stikine, I shouted at him over the howling wind. What has gotten into your queer noodle now? This wild day has nothing for you. Go back to camp and keep warm. Again and again, I ordered him back, but he would not leave. He simply stood in the wind, drenched and blinking as if to say, 
Where you go, I will go. I could not shake him no more than the earth can shake the moon, so I pushed on. Stikine trotted at my heels. All day we climbed the snowy mountains and watched the storm. What a song this storm sang. How fresh the smell of the new snow and the cold, crisp air. When I had the chance, I drew pictures of the white mountains in my notebook. Stikine stayed a little behind, watching me with secret, distant eyes. As we continued our journey, we headed towards a large mountain of ice called Taylor Glacier. The glacier rose before us, huge and forbidding, like a great evil creature guarding a place no man had ever gone. There are a lot of good similes in this book, friends. Pretty good writing. Many miles we climbed to reach the top of the glacier. There we found a field of ice as thick as a mountain, stretching as far as eyes could see. Eagerly, we began exploring. For a mile or two, we found the ice quite safe. Soon, however, we met many long, deep cracks in the ice called crevasses, so deep that no light had ever reached their depths. Death seemed to lie within these holes. Often, we were forced to jump these crevasses in order to continue on our way. So what's cool, let me see if I can show you guys this. That right there is John Muir and Stikine. That shows you how giant these crevasses in this glacier were. Because look, they look so tiny right there. One crevasse was so wide that after leaping it, I tottered for several seconds before falling forward to safety. In contrast, Stikine appeared untroubled Though the crevasses lay like bottomless holes before us, Stikine showed neither caution nor curiosity, wonder nor fear. He sailed over each crevasse like a flying cloud. That's a good simile. And then trotted on as carelessly as if glaciers were his playground. Just as day began to fade towards night and it was time to return to camp, we were stopped by a very large crevasse. Below my feet, two sharp cliffs of ice, see there they are, um, stretched away from each other. I shook my head. This crevasse must be more than 50 feet wide, my boy. Far too wide to jump. Stikine grew quiet. He pawed the icy ground with his foot and looked up at me with wide, wondering eyes. Looking for a way to escape, I walked along that deep and wide ice canyon for almost a mile. Could we go back the way we had come? I wondered. No, we had come too far and had crossed many deep crevasses. I recalled the crevasse I had managed to leap, but with no room to spare. I dare not risk jumping it again. Also, night was approaching, and the sky was dark with the snow of a new storm. Beyond all this, we were wet to the skin and hungry. Were we trapped? Marooned on an island of ice? I'm going to stop reading there because I want you to write a good ending for this story. And don't worry, I will read the ending to you after you write yours. My goal is not for you to um, predict what the author wrote. It could, your, your ending might be the same or it might be totally different. But my goal is for you to write an interesting ending. And I'd like for you to really use some good details. So I'd like for you to write at least five sentences. I know some of you will write way more than that, and that's great. But at least five sentences. All of the sentences will begin with capital letters and have ending punctuation. A lot of them might have periods at the end. Some of your sentences might have exclamation marks if you want to add a lot of excitement. Um, you could even use questions. I noticed the author used uh, three questions on this last page we just read. So um, you decide at least five sentences. What else did I want to say? Oh, and so after that, so you can do it on Seesaw. Or you can just write it on paper, and then if you want to um, draw a picture to go with it, that would be cool too. And you could have your parents take a picture of that and then email it to us, either one. But when you're done with that, then click on the link below this, and you can hear the end of what happened in this true story.
But I left you on a real cliffhanger, right? So I'm excited to see how you guys end the story. Please check your writing to make sure that you actually do have five sentences. With, so you'll have at least five ending punctuation marks on that page. And I can't wait to see what you write. Have fun. Don't forget to tune in to the link below this so you can see uh, how the true story ended.